Now, the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, contains an individual health insurance mandate that takes Congress's powers to a whole new level. For the first time in American history, our national legislature has required every American in every part of this country to purchase a particular product. Not just any product, but health insurance. Not just any health insurance, but that specific kind of health insurance that Congress, in its wisdom, uh, deemed appropriate and necessary for every American to buy. This is absolutely without precedent. It is also, I believe, uh, not defensible. Even under the broad deferential standard that's been applied by the United States Supreme Court since the late 1930s and early 1940s. Among other things, the limits that have been maintained by the Supreme Court, uh, notwithstanding its deference to Congress under the Commerce Clause, have been limited by a few principles. First, the Supreme Court has continued to insist that although some intrastate activities will, will be regulated by Congress under the Commerce Clause, some activities occurring entirely in one, one state, activities that historically would have been regarded as the exclusive domain of states, activities like labor, manufacturing, agriculture, and mining. Although some activities might be covered by Congress, those activities, at a minimum, uh, have to be uh, activities that impose a substantial burden or obstruction on interstate commerce or on Congress's regulation of interstate commerce. Uh, the Supreme Court has also continued to insist that the activity in question that's being regulated uh, needs to be activity, first of all, and not inactivity, but it also needs to involve economic activity in most circumstances. Unless, of course, it is the kind of activity that, while ostensibly non-economic, uh, by its very nature undercuts a larger comprehensive regulation of activity that is itself economic. Finally, the Supreme Court has continued to insist time and time and time again that Congress cannot, in the name of regulating interstate commerce, effectively obliterate the distinction between what is national and what is local. Now, the Affordable Care Act, through its individual mandate, effectively blows past each and every one of these restrictions. Restrictions that, uh, e even under the broad deferential approach that the Supreme Court has taken toward the regulation of commerce by Congress over the last 75 years or so, uh, even the Supreme Court, even under these broad standards, isn't willing to go this far. There are very good reasons for that. And those reasons have to do with our individual liberty. They have to do with the fact that Americans were always intended to live free, and they understood that they're more likely to be free when decisions of great importance need to be hammered out at the state and at the local level. Uh, that is, in, unless those decisions have been uh, specifically delegated to Congress, specifically designated as national responsibilities. This one is not. Decisions about where you go to the doctor and how you're going to pay for it are not decisions that are national in nature, according to the text and spirit and letter and history and understanding of the Constitution. They are not and they cannot be. If in this instance we say, well, this is just important, so we need to allow Congress to act, if we do that, we do so at our own peril. We stand to lose a great deal if all of a sudden we allow Congress to regulate something that is not economic activity. In fact, it's not activity at all. It's inaction. It's a decision by an individual person whether to purchase anything, whether to purchase health insurance, or if so, what kind of health insurance to purchase. Our very liberties are at stake, and that's why I find this concerning.